right, parents, let me ask you a few questions. How did you buy this year's school supplies? Did you do it in a store or did you go online? And when you made your purchases, did you go over the financial aspect, like maybe what it cost with your kids? Well, these type of questions were asked of actually many parents. And today, Chuck Zeppel is here with Junior Achievement to explain why they were asked these questions and what we can actually learn from it. Chuck, thanks so much for being here. You're welcome. Thanks for having me here. So this was kind of a study that Junior uh, Achievement uh, did, and we yes. asked these types of questions, right? Right. We wanted to find out, you know, how are buying patterns happening with parents, and Junior Achievement's about helping our young people and our families succeed in their work and life, and how are those interactions, where are they shopping, how, what kind of conversations are they happening during this exciting time that's back to school? So what did, what did we end up finding out? We found out that still, contrary to a lot of things, this is a lot more than a transaction. This is actually a shopping experience. So parents are taking their children, taking their families to the stores here in town and uh, doing their purchasing there. Okay, so more in store than online. Right. Uh, and then I know like what falls right in line with Junior Achievement is, you know, I said, are we talking to our kids about the financial portion uh, of these purchases? Did, did that come out at all? It, it did. A lot of parents are semi-reluctant. Maybe they don't know as much about money management and spending. Uh, a lot of people think that money management is a lot more about saving, but it's a great balance between saving and spending, you need to learn how to do both. And a lot of parents uh, find it difficult to spend, they don't have the resources financially to do everything they wanna do yeah. at back to school time. So these are fantastic teachable moments that a lot of parents are taking advantage of have those conversations at the store with their children. So it should go beyond just, hey, do you like this book, the, the style of, of your lunch pail? We're gonna turn these into teachable moments. And do we have ways we can tell parents to do that? Absolutely, uh, especially with older kids, but younger kids too. We can talk about that uh, when you're buying uh, clothing or shoes. I mean, you may want Nikes, but you need shoes. So it's under terms of wants and needs. Involve them in the decisions because learning to spend, whether they want the higher end binder versus the lower end, means that we can buy other things that you do want or need at the same time. So having that conversation and that shopping experience is helping them grow up to be responsible adults and be able to teach their children. And I've said this about uh, Junior Achievement every time we've talked about you guys on the show, I wish that this type of a program was available to me when I was younger because these are real life lessons and we're kind of taking what you guys do in your program and saying, hey parents, you can also do these in right. these everyday routine right. things. So what are some of the other ways that we're, we're doing those teachable moments for students? Uh, parents have a lot of places they can do that if they're at a restaurant, when they're in the grocery store. Yeah. I always took my kids grocery shopping to have those conversations. Sometimes do you want to get generic? Do you want to get the name brand? How much do we want to do? If we're going to have friends over, those conversations are great teachable moments for them. For Junior Achievement, we're teaching a lot of these same things and we're reinforcing what the classroom is teaching them, what the parents are teaching them, but from our volunteers in the classroom sharing that again. So they get the message from a lot of different ways. And it is. I think it, it, it's a it's a round. You know what do you mean? We a little bit at home, we've got some at school, and you kind of absorb all that and then of course as you become an adult, you're like, whoa, this stuff is real life, right. things I could use. And that's really what Junior Achievement is really you know, all about and the programs that we you are. guys do. How does somebody maybe get involved? Uh, it's real simple. You can go to our website. You can call us. We are in the classrooms of students. Yeah. We're in almost 8,000 students you know, yeah. this past year in Tucson alone. Um, that's a lot of volunteers. We don't have staff going in. We want volunteers, people with real life experience. They've done these things, whether they're business people or stay-at-home moms or they're retired or their grandparents, in the classroom with our pre-designed curriculum that they have their life experience and deliver to the students. Students love having uh, these outside mentors and uh, people coming into the the classroom and they're really wrapped the kids are ready for this yeah. they know this uh, that this is important to their life. Well, let me tell any person that's thinking about volunteering, and, and again, because I, I've worked uh, alongside with Junior Achievement for many years, mm -hmm. is the kids look forward to the volunteers coming in. They can't wait for them to come in. It's, you know, kind of like something fun for them. Uh, and you guys make it very easy for the volunteers. Like you said, it's already a pre-done kind of right. like booklet. You just walk right through it. Uh, it. It's something that is beneficial for both sides, I think. Uh, Chuck, I think the study one was great. Uh, and two, I'm gonna remind everyone everyone how to get a hold of you guys if they want to be a part of that volunteer uh, portion of it. We would love that. Thank you. Thank you so much. To learn more about Junior Achievement, please call 792-2000 or log on to jaaz.org.